All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, let's see. Yesterday was an interesting day. <laughs> Flew into Toronto for the Toronto event. And after that, we flew from Toronto to Chicago, which was a farce. Um, and I didn't even store the video for later viewing because it was bad. Uh, it was also rushed. Um, I didn't mention it too much, but my, my wife wanted me to run over and I needed to help her out, and so I was a little bit rushed, and I was a little bit, I just needed to get on the ground, I was getting kind of ticked off, and so, yeah, that didn't go so well. So it's all good, it's all good. So today we're going to do a flight from my hometown of Charlottetown, uh, and we're going to go to uh, Montreal, and we're going to do it in the CRJ. Uh, I did update the NAV data, so it should be behave a lot better um, and I am a little more familiar with the aircraft than I was uh, before so let's give it a shot uh, I don't know, I've mentioned it before but the Charlottetown um, Charlottetown the uh, scenery for it does not have any parking spots uh, available they're all full and you can't even choose one uh, so I need somebody to modify modify the scenery and give me a parking spot so I can start there. Because right now we're just going to start uh, right on the runway here. Uh, but that's all right. It'll give us a quick start anyway. So let's just get started and we can continue yakking once we get in the air. All right. Uh, we need the... All right. Let's, uh, let's jump down here. Uh, no, we, don't need, we need this guy. And we need to open the APU door. So if I press that, it doesn't really seem to do anything. But theoretically... Hey, Alex. How you doing, man? Can we fly low, he says. Alex says, can we fly low? Um, how low, man? <laughs> uh, this aircraft, most of these airliners really like the high altitude. You get a, you get a little more speed, actually a lot more speed out of them when you're flying up high. I don't want to take forever to get there. Uh, and we want to maintain a little bit of realism, but, uh, how low do you want, man? <laughs> okay. The Ram wars, Ram, uh, the, uh, sorry, the APU doors are open so we can start up the APU. All right, APU is starting, and we'll uh, get rid of the warnings for now. As soon as that reaches about 100, we'll have, uh, there we go, it's available. We have power. All right, so let's, uh, let's get some air moving in here, and we'll turn on the APU generator, so we get the rest of our screens, which is perfect. And we need to get our nav uh, IRS alignment started. There we go. Uh, let's see. Go to our position initialization page. We're going to go CYYG and copy that down into there so that we can start the alignment. Awesome. All right, so good stuff. So we're uh, we might as well continue planning. Uh, we got the we got time, so we'll just drag this over here. Uh, let's see. We're going to we're gonna go. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Let's set up the fuel as well. Fuel Simbrief tells us we need fourteen thousand five eighteen. Uh, that's a lot. Jeez, that's a lot. Maybe it's a farther flight than I think. Huh. So if we fill up the wing tanks, it gives us 9,000. All right. We're going to go up to... Jeez, that's a full tank, man. That's full. 
We don't need that much fuel. What the heck is this thing smoking? <laughs> Simbrief told me. Oh, I see. They have a really errant uh, uh, waypoint. Yeah. We're going to have to regenerate that flight plan. And change. Uh, we're going to have to change the... Uh, yeah, H-U-L. We're going to have to change some of these routes here. H-U-L. Yeah, that looks good. We'll do that. Generate the OFP again. Yeah, that was insane. 14,000 pounds of fuel. That's all this thing holds, and we're only going for like an hour and 10-minute flight or something. It's pretty crazy. Uh, that's better. 5,900. All right, so let's take it out of the center tank. And we'll drop it down. Uh, let's see. We're going to need about 27-ish in each. Yeah, that's close enough. We don't need uh, taxi fuel, so we'll leave that. Flight time is about an hour and uh, 19 minutes, so that's good. And uh, we'll apply those changes. And we'll go to the flight plan page where we're going to go type in C-Y-U-L. And it knows where that is, which is perfect. And we're going to, let's see, an Air Canada flight. I believe it was with a 319, though. Did the same flight and landed a couple hours ago. And they went to YQM. So we'll put in Y, Q, M, and drop it in there, and execute. And then we'll go to the next page, and then they went to VLV, VLV, and drop it in there. And they did the Ombre 4 uh, arrival, so that's fine. So let's go to our departures and arrival pages. Set up our departures. We're leaving on runway 21. There is no SID. And our arrival will be runway 24 left. And we're doing the Ombre 4 VLV transition. 24 left. And execute that. And let's go like, take a look at our legs. We do have a disco after YQM, so we'll just bring up VLV, and we'll go to the next page, and we have a little bit of a disco there too, uh, yeah, I think that's fine, we're going to do that for now, we'll, we'll take a look at it once we're in the air, and see how that is, we have a altitude restriction at Sloka, uh, but the rest of it looks okay. There's our there's our landing there. Okay. We're looking good. We're going to take off here. We're going to turn direct for the Moncton uh, VOR. So that's good. All right. So that looks fine. We do have to... We should go to the perf page, though. Uh, get that stuff done. Temperature outside is about 22 right now, I believe. And we're going to do it that guy. Just to li limit the thrust so that we don't... Uh, uh, burn out the engines. All right, how we doing on our? Uh, we have uh, we have this guy up here now. You can see that, and it's good. That means uh, our alignment's done on our IRS. And what's our total weight? Forty thousand nine hundred. So I need to take a look at the docks. Forty thousand. 900 so we can get our V speeds. There we go. All right, so we're going to go flaps 8. And uh, let's uh, let's set this up. Okay, so flip this over. Well, we might as well set this while we're here. VT is 166. Yeah, oh, there we go. All right, we'll do the other ones first. <laughs> you guys seeing this? 
I hit select. It's not changing. supposed to see V1 showing up there when we hit the select button under V speeds. All right, what are we missing? Uh, we have power. We have, there's nothing up here. Hydraulics are on. Uh, might as well turn on the yaw damper. Oh, okay. All right, we're missing stuff. So, What are we missing? Power is on. We're using stuff. Uh, hydraulics are on. Power APU is good. Can't do anything. It doesn't seem like we can do anything else. Look at that. The buttons don't do anything. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're sitting on the runway anyway. Let's see if we can start the motors at least. Uh, well, those are closed, so that's fine. No, we have nothing. Wow. Huh. That's a little strange. Let's take a look at our status panels here. Uh, primary ECS. Uh, I can't even switch that. Look at that. Something's broke. Damn it. Stuff like this always happens when you're streaming. Look, look, you can't even switch the screens. It's almost like uh, airplanes froze up. Or X-plane. Our airplane is froze. It just doesn't want to do anything. I mean, you can hear. Well, I can. <laughs> Let me turn it up for you. You can hear uh, the APUs running. You can see it in the plane. Uh, take a look at the console. Yeah, I can't. It's not going to do us any good. Uh, yeah, no, it looks good. Everything's fine. Reboot. Uh, I didn't do anything anyway. Let's test to see if it's an X-plane issue or if it's an aircraft issue. Parking brake is here. If I flip my switches, yeah, that's still alive. All right, so the plane's still alive. We're just missing avionics. Yeah, let's troubleshoot on a live stream. Damn it. It's like all of our buttons just stopped working. Wow. I apologize, guys. This does not usually happen. Oh, sorry, Roger. I, f I missed you, man. How's it going? Hope you had a good birthday, buddy. Uh... We got lights on and everything. It's so strange. Some things work, some things don't. Come on, man. You should be able to switch to a different screen. It's gonna lock it up. All right, let's start over. Yeah, okay, I just turned off the battery and everything's on. Can't turn, and <laughs> the APU won't turn off. Got a little flash out of that, guys.
APU gens off, battery masters off, and we still have screens. It's a miracle. <laughs> We're getting power from some heavenly divine figure. Uh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. We're gonna have to reload this plane, I think. What if we just changed a few things about it? Uh, yeah, like what if we just changed it to a British Airways plane? Did that reset anything? No. Didn't do a damn thing. All right, we're reloading next plane. Sorry guys, this happened yesterday as well. Not the same thing, like something else happened and I had to restart X-Plane. Hmm, interesting. Sorry, I'm eating a pizza pocket. And X-Plane officially crashed. There we go. Ah, at least we get to fire it up. Get a new one. Although that was new. I'll mute while I'm chewing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll start X Plane up again. It is starting, so you should be able to see something shortly. battery yeah yeah all right uh, open this guy up doors are open starting the APU okay Gen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Let's take a peek. See, let me see if we can switch. ECS. There we go. There we go. All right. That's what I want to see. So everything is back to normal. Uh, we're using the APU for power. <coughs> Let's do this really quick. These guys. Um, slide this over. Here, at least we'll get a get a view of the plane while I'm doing this. All right. Position initialization. So C Y Y G, and grabbing that, putting it in there, and C Y. U L dropping it in there. Um, YQM, I believe, was our first one, which was Moncton. Drop that in there. Go to the next page. VLV. VLV. Drop that in there. Execute. Departure 21. Execute. 
and arrival ombre vlv 24 left execute done except for this guy <laughs> uh 22 boom boom and that should be that so we'll bring this guy up i believe we had another disco down here yeah we did so we'll bring sloka up sure that's the right thing to do might make a sharp corner for us but we'll check it out in the air so this guy is good all right i want to switch back uh to the proper air canada livery uh no we want to do that we want to go to jazz apply that there we go that's better makes more sense flying out of charlottetown with a british airways crj yeah, right. All right, let's uh, turn on our... Well, we don't need our taxi lights. We will, we'll turn on our landing lights and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're just waiting for this guy to give us a map. And uh, we will... Actually, I guess we can just fire up the engines now. So igniters on. We'll turn off the air conditioning packs. And uh, that should do it. Start. Oh, need air. Sorry. Oh, yeah. There's, that's what we're doing there. So we got to isolate that over. There we go. And the engine's starting up. So we're waiting for this guy N2 to get to uh, about 25. And there it is. Give it some, introduce some fuel. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, we don't need this guy anymore. Go away. Looks pretty good. Nothing's going crazy. And I just noticed our IRS alignment is done. So this is going to be a quick, quick getaway. Here comes engine number two. Well, technically engine number one. Second engine starting. Oops, a little late on the fuel. That's all right. Just air. It's just air, guys. Just air. All right. Just making sure these... Uh, Stabilize. I don't want it to go flying up here. There we go. Drop our flaps. Yeah, everything's everything's equalizing out. Good. All right. Landing lights. Generators from the engines. Don't need the APU anymore. Uh, we don't need to isolate anymore. Uh, we don't need, we can turn on the packs, well, though I think you're supposed to leave them off for takeoff, but that's all right. Don't need uh, ignition anymore, and we don't need that. Hydraulics can come on now. And uh, all of our stuff is gone from there. We'll need all of these on. And those are on, we don't need taxi lights, and we are going to be using, uh, I didn't even check our flight altitude, where are we going up to? We are gonna go 340, wow. So altitude, here, bring this up, get rid of this guy, drop him down here. So our altitude, There's no faster way to do this, really. What if I zoomed backwards? Oops. Give myself a little more room. Or does that work that way? No, it doesn't seem to. All right, I'm using my panel. <laughs> Three, four, zero. It's a lot of dial turning. There we go. Three, four, zero. I should check the chat. There we go. Good stuff. Good, we did check our fuel, right? Yeah, and cruise level set. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to, uh, we're gonna select nav and we're gonna select speed 
And our climbing speed's going to be 166. Or is that what it was? We didn't check, we didn't do that yet. Haha. -ha. That's what we're missing. So we're gonna come down here. And this is where it broke the last time. So we're gonna go V speeds and V1. And it's turning. Perfect. Alright, so let's take a look at the I need the chart again. There we go. Uh our V1 is 125. Our VR is 126. Jeez, that's really close. And our V2, oops, our V2 is 139. And our VT is 166. There we go. 166. Perfect. So it should hold that speed that we've selected by taking us up. So even though it's speed, this is really how we're handling our vertical uh, in a in a Boeing, it would be um, vertical, and uh, and the uh, the nav takes care of the horizontal. So that said, let's do a quick look around. Make sure we got everything set. It's looking good. Don't need brakes. Got our flaps. IRS is all aligned, everything's good. All right, let's do this. Quick, quick setup. I hope I, I'm pretty sure we probably screwed something up, but uh, that's all right. Uh, second time I've flown in this aircraft, guys, outside of the, tu the tutorial one, so. All right, let's do it. I'm sitting on the runway already, so. Bring up the, uh, the engines. Stable and take off. Yeah, you can see the, the thrust limiters backing off the N1. Wow, little bit of a the wind coming from the right, I think. Rotate. There we go, positive rate, gears coming up. And whoa, gotta fix up that. Uh, oh, I should turn on our uh, flight director. There we go. And select FMS. Follow the flight director. We'll fly by hand for a little bit until we get everything all nice and stabilized. We are a little fast compared to what we were planning, but it's good. It's pretty good. Ah, you know what? This is all good. I'm gonna bring up the flaps and uh, turn on the uh, autopilot because uh, it's looking good. Why? Uh, oh, right. <laughs> the yaw dampers. There we go. There we go. Let's get a quick view of the outside while we can still see the ground. There's Charlottetown. Got some beautiful little clouds over top of it there, which is, I believe, true. Bridge in Stratford. Here's downtown, down there. You can even see the Walmart. <laughs> oh, we got some Got some streamers coming off of our winglets. Awesome. I can see my house from here. Right over there. Right in there. <laughs> it's awesome. I love ortho scenery. All right, we are climbing like a bat out of hell. So let's uh, 
Let's start cranking up the speed a little bit. We don't need to climb quite that fast. So we'll crank that up and let the nose come down a little bit and we'll gain up some speed here. Let's verify the flaps in the gear. They are good. Uh, should check our barometer, but as soon as we hit 18, we're gonna go standard anyway, so that's fine. A little faster. This guy flies like a bat out of hell once you get him up to altitude. It's awesome. Do me a favor uh, if you're watching and hit that like button and uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, see lots of cool new X-Plane stuff. I do plan on keeping current with this. So. Oh, 10,000 feet. Landing lights can come off. It's all good. Yeah, I am planning on keeping current with this stuff and keeping the, uh, uh, getting all the aircraft when they come out, learning them as fast as I can, as I do with all of these ones. Although none of the planes that I'm buying now are new. This one specifically is quite old, actually. It's one of the first complex simulator, uh, airline simulators that, uh, that made it into X-Plane, actually. All right, let's. Uh, we're above ten thousand, so we can uh, crank up that speed a little bit more. Don't want to stop the climb completely, but that's all right. Let's take a look outside. Yeah, lots of cloud now. <laughs> lots of cloud now. Uh, we should probably change. Um, uh, the format on this guy so we can actually see uh, what's going on. So we'll drag this down here and uh, change the format so we can see our flight plan. Come on, man. There we go. Boom. And we'll increase the range. There we go. YQM. YQM to VLV, and that's 320 miles, so this is going to be a long flight. I didn't think it was that long, but this, uh, this guy says it's going to be an hour and 14 minutes. I don't think it was that long. We'll see if we can shorten that up a little bit once we get up to altitude. 18,000 feet, barometer goes to 299 or 2, which it already was, which is perfect. All right. Time to crank up the speed a little more. All right, I want to I want to go to our engine page for this guy. So, or not the engine, but the uh, the trim and all that kind of stuff. The status page. They also have. I should go through these and show you guys. It's pretty cool. They got the hydraulics. Uh, ECS you've seen already that's showing where the air is coming from so we ha had it coming from the APU now we have it coming from the engines and we're up to uh, 54 and 53 PSI um, we have hydraulics so it shows where all that is and it's looking good we have electrics where everything's getting power so the power is coming from the generators from the engines right now there's 117 volts and uh, bus one, bus two, and we can see what's uh, currently powering everything. It's pretty cool. We have a fuel page. Shows us uh, the temperatures and how much fuel's left and where they're going and what we're fueling and all that kind of stuff. So we're not fueling the APU right now, uh, but we are fueling the engines. It's pretty awesome. Awesome. We're already cruising at the. We're not. We're climbing, and we're already going as fast as Airbuses and Boeing's, which is pretty awesome. We're actually going. I think we're going a little. We might be going a little faster than they do sometimes, which is very cool.
All right, so that's uh, that's that guy. He's got a lot of cool cool stuff on there. I usually leave him on primary for now. Kind of keep an eye on stuff. Uh, I suppose actually we should keep an eye on fuel. If we uh, we do have the capability of burning a lot of gas in this plane, if we're uh, if we're not too careful. Oh, we have some land here. Look at that. Land without cloud, that is. We can actually see, because it looks like we're going to be hitting a big cloud bank coming up here. <laughs> and of course, as we climb, the, uh, the indicated airspeed that we're allowed to go uh, will slowly come down because we're... Uh, the air's thinner so at some point here we're gonna we're gonna have to drop back a little bit on our speed but look at our mock 0.8 we're cruising even though our indicated airspeed's coming down our mock goes up and our ground speed is uh 459 we do have a, a uh, right to left headwind uh, at about 36 knots so you know add those together and uh, we would be going significantly faster in terms of ground speed if we didn't have the headwind so yeah and you can't add them together directly I know but you know close enough all right we're gonna slow down the indicated a little bit once we get up to 32, we can really push it, and we'll probably hit Mach 0.84, which is probably, it's not overspeed, but we're probably, it's probably too much. We'll probably burn too much gas. I mean, we're already, we're already burning quite a bit here. You can look here, or you can look here. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, total fuel, 7260. We started off with about But that's not right. We started. I thought we started off with 5,900. Oh wow! What does what does this guy say? 72. Okay, fair enough. My bad. We may not have. Uh, I thought we checked it when we came back, but maybe not. So we got lots of extra gas that we can just totally burn off. So we'll yeah, we'll push it and see how fast we can go uh, without overspeeding, of course. And without continually climbing, like I believe we're doing. No, we're going up three, four. Okay. Hammer down, boys. Hammer down. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Even, I'm not paying attention to the chat here. All right. All right. As always, uh, leave some comments or questions or anything you want in the, in the chat, and uh, I will answer them live. Thousand feet left, that's what that beep was. Thousand feet left till we hit uh, top of climb. We are way up there, folks. Way, way up. Wow, look at that. Can hardly make out the buildings even. Pretty high, folks, pretty high. And we're at Moncton and we're turning towards VLV. That's about, I'd say, 260 miles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's right here. Of course it is. Yeah, I'm clairvoyant. Eh, it's all good. We have about 50 minutes left in the flight. There you go. Probably uh, should slow down our indicated target a little bit. We just blew past our uh, our altitude, and the reason for that is because we have it set. And it doesn't matter; you could set for al uh, an altitude, which which it is, because we we're set for speed, and then we uh, it goes to altitude hold. But if it just can't slow down if you can't slow down like if you're going too fast and it thinks we need to slow down it's just going to keep climbing that's the only way it has the only control it has to affect our the aircraft's speed 
and we're doing Mach 0.85. Wow. Never see a Boeing or an Airbus do that. Never. Never, 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 never. So you can see it's coming back down because I slowed down a little bit and I throttled back. So it's going to come back down now that it can and it's, it'll settle itself down on 34,000 feet or flight level 340. And so now this guy here, uh, it's uh, irrelevant really. The speed bug is irrelevant. It's, it's all based on my throttles for the most part, unless we're descending or climbing, but right now we're in cruise, which if we take a peek in here. Uh, it's the one thing I haven't really found real useful, anything real useful in this FMS is uh, they don't seem to have, um, there's no real useful, uh, how do I put it? Like this guy here has like how much time's left, how far, that kind of thing. Uh, you go to the legs page, it just tells you nothing over here it, you don't even have anywhere that I've found so far to even put in what your cruise altitude is um, so that it can calculate all that for you there is no calculation for descent I know that um, but you would think that it would be able to like why do they have those other than restrictions right they do have a radio page that can tune things in for you uh, if you're going to VORs and whatnot, so I got those on auto mode. You can, I think you can just switch it by hitting this button here. Um, but there really isn't a lot. Um, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, functionality, let's say, that will help you uh, get around and do, you know, what you, it doesn't give you a lot of information that uh, other aircraft give you so and I don't know if that's because it's uh, not modeled or if that's how the plane actually works in real life so uh, there you go all right we are cruising along we are very stable at Mach 0.84 which is cruising fast and uh, Everything looks pretty stable. So I am going to take a quick break. And I will leave you with some tunes. Um, and uh, hang on, did I turn up the tunes instead of the engines? I totally did, didn't I? Sorry guys. Yeah, you've been listening to tunes the whole time, and I've been talking about sounds that have been happening. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I'll turn the tunes up a little bit, and then I'll turn them back down when I'm back. Sorry, guys. Now you get to listen to the airplane. <laughs> I'll be back.
All right, I am back. All right. Um, sorry about that. Uh, earlier, I guess I had the music turned up and not the engine. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, everything looks good now. So let's take a peek on the inside of the cockpit here and uh, see how we're doing. Uh, well, we don't really have to come in to see how we're doing. We're doing okay. We got about 306 miles until, we're, until we land. And I noticed while I was gone, I did not have um, my fly live set up so that I can't, you guys can't see where I'm going to and all that kind of stuff. So I'll set that up for you real quick. Um, Seven, three, four, zero, and apply. And you guys should be able to see shortly where we're going to and where we're coming from, hopefully. All right. Well, that's not really working too good, is it? <laughs> I put it in and it's not really, uh, it's not taking it. I don't know why. All right, sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so. Our descent, uh, we do have some flight restrictions here, so let's, let's take a peek uh, at the uh, FMC, and we'll look at our uh, legs, and we'll take a look at any restrictions that are coming up. The only one we have is uh, Sloka, we have to be above 3,000 feet, so that's really good, which means uh, we're really, I mean, since our, we'll be approaching it around 3,000 anyway, uh, it doesn't look like... Uh, yeah, and these are all above, uh, so that's no problem. We'll be uh, we'll be approaching at about 3,000 anyway, so we will plan to descend to 3,000, and uh, we will do that based on time. Um, and we're going to descend at a rate of about 1,800 feet per minute. So. Uh, let's see, we'll bring up a calculator if I can. Do it the, uh, do it the right way. And what we'll do here is, uh, I'm going to drag it over to my other monitor, if I can. There we go. What we're going to do is we're going to figure it out. So 1800 feet per minute. Uh, we got to get down to 3,000. We're at 34,000 right now. So 31,000 uh, divided by 1,800 is about, it's going to take us about a little over 17 minutes. Um, so when we are 17, about 20 minutes from Montreal, we'll, uh, we'll begin our descent. Um, because this is as the crow, the crow flies. It's a direct line right now to, well, not a direct line, but a direct line based on our current speed. Uh, and of course, we'll be slowing down as we get down there. So that'll give us extra time. And so, yeah, 20 minutes looks about right. So we got about 37 minutes uh, right now. So once we get down to maybe a little, maybe we'll, maybe 21 or 22 minutes, we'll begin our descent. And uh, this plane has no problems descending at uh, whatever speed I want, almost. And we'll, we, we're able to uh, maintain our um, uh, our speed without going too fast. So it's it's it works really well. So uh, that's what we'll do. And uh, let's see if we can speed up just a bit. Because we dry, I noticed we dropped down to Mach 0.84. So I'm going to try and get her up to about Mach 0.85 if we can without having to 
ascend. There we go. Then we can back off the throttles just a bit. Constantly messing with the throttles in this plane. Looks like there's a little bit of land through the clouds. Got quite a few clouds out today. Doesn't look too bad though. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, see, the autopilot's uh, bringing us up. It doesn't want us to go that fast, so we gotta slow down a little bit. Just a little bit. And it's bringing us back down. <laughs> yeah, this is about as fast as we're allowed to go in this aircraft, guys. About as fast as we're allowed to go, and our ground speed's about 460, so that's pretty good. We're doing all right. I guess uh, oh, we need the probes on. We didn't turn our probe heaters on. We They'd probably be frozen up right now. Doesn't seem to model that here. Although we have been flying in pretty clear skies up here, so maybe it's okay. <laughs> they do tend to ice up real easy, though. All right. That's all looking good. And... Uh, let people stand up never had them on to start with all right let's do a cabin tour shall we all right stand up come over here open up the door do we have to no we'll just go through it all right there we are welcome to the CRJ 200 there's our door with the stairs built in. Oh, and you can open it right there. I don't dare try it right now. <laughs> I don't dare. Nice seats. Got some lights on. If you look down underneath, you can see we got the uh, the air nozzles and the light. It's pretty good. Let's look out the window. Oh, he's got his window shut. Nice. What about this guy? They all do. Anybody have them open? Here's one. Right above the wing. Nice. Nice. This guy's got it half open. Look behind the wing. Not too bad. They actually did a better job in here. Uh, there's the There's the lavatory right there. They did a better job in the uh, passenger cabin in this than they did the uh, IXCG 737, and that's saying a lot, because the uh, IXCG 737 is really good. They even got the little passenger safety cards down there. That's funny. And the galley is fairly basic. It's not too bad. Another little escape door there it's good let's get back in the let's get back in the cockpit boom let's sit up a little bit look out the window not a whole lot to see right now there's a bunch of clouds but it looks like it's clearing up over there so we should be should be breaking through the cloud here and uh, we'll uh, get some nice views coming into Montreal Coming into Montreal. So one thing I've been wondering, guys, is uh, I'm wondering about the format. Uh, do you like the format? Um, you know, the format is prone to errors where like today where we had to restart the simulator. That's kind of a pain in the butt. 
would you rather see just some videos that have been pre-made and uh, you know I cut out some of the boring parts like this um, let me know um, in the uh, comments or even in the chat if you're watching this live uh, but definitely comment and let me know what you'd uh, if you'd like to see something different and I think at the moment what we're gonna do is reduce the range on the navigational display so that we can get a better idea of how far things are and what's going on we're about 230 miles from Montreal and we got about half an hour left in the flight which will end up being about probably about 40 minutes or so maybe 45 yeah take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the pedestal we haven't done too much on there um, really the only real thing you have to worry about down here is uh, I mean there's some fire stuff um, you know we got the the different nav components down here which is different we're not squawking and there we go we're squawking 6311 now we were not transmitting before but there's our nav radio um, and there's our comms. Uh, right here we have our thrust reversers and spoilers, so they're automatic in this plane. And also the cool thing about this plane is about 100 feet uh, before a touchdown, the autopilot will automatically turn itself off, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And uh, the rest of this stuff isn't really uh, isn't really modeled. We have a landing gear thing there and our throttles of course and our uh, spoilers and our flaps which is good uh, the buttons down here control this guy right now we have it set on the fuel page which is right here uh, a little bit of trim the rudder trim is modeled by the looks of it which is great the lighting that display one I have not been able to get it to move the others move no problem um, the yaw dampers you have to have them engaged otherwise the autopilot won't turn on uh, we have PA chime call and emergency buttons that are modeled and they do stuff but uh, it doesn't seem like uh, it really does a whole lot um, and then down here uh, just uh, some calm type stuff fire there's our IRS's. We have to have those set to nav so that they'll align. Um, some more radio stuff there. Basically the same thing on for the co-pilot side. So that's exciting. Uh, this plane does tend to bank quite harshly uh, when you're in autopilot. And if you want it to bank less harsh, you can say half bank. So instead of doing like a, I don't know, it's like a 45 degree angle or something, it'll drop it down to half that get our back course turbulence button not sure what the X for is yet I haven't read about that speed we used that on the way out when we took off we uh, hit the speed button and it maintained a speed by adjusting our rate of ascent approach button we will use um, heading will keep us on a heading as opposed to right now we're using nav mode which follows our navigation path and altitude we're doing right now it'll hold the altitude as long as we don't go too fast or too slow and vertical speed is what we'll use to descend we'll set that for 1800 feet per minute and it will maintain that as long as we don't overspeed and uh, of course uh, this guy will change the speed at which we descend um, and I have uh, I have my go flight panel for that so I don't bother with that button too much and our flight directors so that's the autopilot MCP down here we have uh, it controls our PFD um, for the most part and V speeds target speeds that's these guys um, selecting it and uh, moving this will rotate the numbers uh, our nav source right now we're set for FMS but once we do our approach, we'll switch that to our um, 
we'll switch that to our VORs or other radios. Barrow, we'll set this guy, which is our uh, the pressure that we're currently flying with. And right now we're set to standard, which is 2992. And uh, yeah, so PFD doesn't seem to do anything. Doesn't seem like I can switch it right now. I'm not sure what those are. <laughs> there we go. And down here we have some more lighting and the display one doesn't seem to do much. Wipers. Our wipers are modeled. There they go. We'll turn that in. They can go faster. <laughs> And we can slow them right down and we can stop them. There you go. Up here we have our landing lights, we have our taxi lights, and we have our seatbelt signs and no smoking signs. Up top we have our hydraulics, lights, fire stuff, um, and electrical panel. So we have our battery master turned on right now and we have Gen 1 and Gen 2 running off of the engines when the APU is running. We do it through there. Air is kind of like this whole section here with including the APU, starting it, opening the doors and starting it and uh, turning on the APU, air, um, and then air conditioning packs. Right now they're on because there's no lights. And we have our cabin pressure, which seems to be relatively automatic. I haven't read a whole lot about that yet, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, our probes and our anti-ice stuff is here. Right now, it seems like we just have we just need probes. We're not in any really bad cloud or anything. And uh, we have some uh, miscellaneous lights down here, overhead. Turn that up. And uh, dome lights. We can turn that on. And if it was nighttime, it would uh, help us greatly, I'm sure. And our uh, we got some error lights here. We got our master caution. And uh, there we go, master warning. <laughs> All right, looks like we're coming out of the clouds finally. Let's go outside and take a peek at the ground. Looking good. Not a whole lot of uh, places that people actually would live around here. There, it looks like it's mostly wilderness. for the most part. I don't see too many roads or houses or anything. I don't see too many farms or anything either. Of course, we're at 34,000 feet, so that's quite a ways away. Looks like we have a little bit of a... That's probably the river up there. St. Lawrence. Or not St. Lawrence, the one that goes into Montreal, whatever that is. Could be some fog coming in, though, because we're just like here visuals for the weather today brought to you by X Enviro, the latest version. Oh, hey, I just noticed Ryan posted something. Hey, Ryan, how you doing, man? Ryan and I used to work together, and Ryan also does live streams of uh, some video games. So, yeah. Nothing better to do on a Sunday outside of watching football, as far as I can tell. I noticed our speed slowed down a little bit. We're going to turn up the, uh, give it a little more throttle, see if we can get that back up there. Oh, we're at about 21 minutes uh, from Montreal, so we're going to start our descent. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over here, we're going to switch into vertical speed mode, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to drop this down to about 1,800 feet per minute, and shortly that will start happening. We'll throttle back just a touch. We're going to throttle back a little more. And bring in vertical speed again. Come on.
There we go. And we're going to drop down to, sorry, that's why it's happening. I got to drop my altimeter down. And then we can turn on our vertical speed. There we go. Much better. Much, much better. And we'll take our altitude down, all the way down to 3,000. There we go. And uh, we can get our speed up a little more again. At least our ground speed. It'll, it won't drop at the right rate if we go too fast. Of course, if we're if we're descending, we got a little more. We got gravity on our side, and it's pulling us down, so it's making us go faster without using as much throttle. So we can. That's why we can throttle back, but we're still maintaining 471 on the ground speed. Of course, our headwind dropped to 11 knots here, so coming directly at us though. It's the downside of flying east to west. All right. And now we're descending. Let's turn on the uh, seatbelt signs for everybody. Tell them to sit down. Take a peek outside. There we go. We got some settlements down there. We got some kind of some kind of little town there. Little town over here. Usually humans like to congregate around rivers and lakes. There. You can see all the little towns all along this river. Oh, great. We got more cloud coming up. Awesome. Once we hit 10,000 feet, we'll turn on our landing lights and uh, get ready for our approach. Eighteen minutes out of Montreal. And we're already down to 29,000 feet, so we're doing well. As we descend, our uh, indicated airspeed will actually um, technically increase. Uh, and our overspeed will uh, increase with it, but our mock speed will be coming down uh, consistently as we descend. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to give her some more gas because the air is getting thicker, and uh, you need to maintain that air fuel ratio. So we'll have to give it a little more gas to maintain our speed. Until we hit 10,000 feet, then we're obliged to slow down to 250 knots indicated. Air Canada Jazz. It's funny, they, they have these themed, they have uh, orange ones, red ones, green ones, and I think they have a yellow one um, but all the elements on the aircraft are that color which throws me for a little bit of a loop because this one has a red jazz but the maple leaf is orange or at least it seems like it we'll do a little panorama spin here looks okay from this side <laughs> it's hard to tell Got the heat jets coming out the back of the 
the engines, the heat waves. There's our cockpit. Looks like we have no cloud behind us. So we've been flying with no cloud for a while. Nice sun effects and lighting effects in the cockpit. Some of our windows are closed, as we noticed when we did the cabin tour. There we go. And we're coming up on more cloud. Great. All right. Let's jump back in the cockpit. And we can increase or decrease our uh, range on this guy. Boom. There we go. Our first restriction is at Sloka, and we're not even close to that yet, so we're not too concerned. Uh, we are descending a little slower than we're supposed to, so we're going to have to throttle back a little bit. Ground speed is still maintaining a 460, so that's good. This is about as fast as we can humanly get there. Airbus and Boeings, would, we'd be quite a ways back still. Coming up on 22,000 feet. At this point in the back, the people can't even tell we're descending unless they've been paying attention to the clouds and we're getting closer to them. Looks like we got a nice hole, but we, will, we won't be going below this guy, so we'll probably be going right through that cloud. Unless it gets out of our way first. Hard to tell. Ground speed is coming, is, is slowing down a little bit as we hit the thicker air, and uh, I don't dare speed up right now because we're, uh, we're getting kind of close, and we do need to maintain our descent speed of 1.8. But this is great because if I was in the dash eight right now, uh, I'd be having trouble. I cannot make that thing uh, descend faster than about a thousand feet per minute. Uh, without overspeeding, it's just it's too slick that aircraft. It's a, it's a turbo prop, so it's totally different, um, and I just can't do it. <laughs> it just doesn't want to uh, descend any faster than that. So you really have to be careful. This guy, I can drop like a rock and uh, throttle back, and we'll and we'll slow right down. So uh, it works a lot. The descending is a lot easier in this plane. All right, yeah, we're definitely getting into some clouds here. I, it does look like we don't have too much on the other side, though, so we might be okay once we get through this. Hopefully it doesn't get too bumpy. Give you guys a, a bumpy ride back there. All right, we're going to throttle up a little bit. sure we maintain our descent rate just uh, I noticed the ground speed was getting a little slow it's at 425 right now
yeah, looks like we're gonna get right through here, which is great. Which is great. Looks like we have a nice clear, clear path in front of us, so that's great. Oh, too fast. <laughs> we're, it wasn't letting us descend. We are still running almost half throttle though, so um, we got lots of room to throttle back if we need to drop faster. Got about 10 minutes into Montreal and we're at 15,000 feet. So if we round our descent off to 1,800 or 2,000 feet per minute, that will give us 20,000 feet worth of uh, descending. And uh, so that's plenty because we're only at 15. Should give us lots of time to line up for our approach into runway 24 left. And we're about to go through some cloud by the looks of it. Oh no, it was just, just getting out of our way. Yeah, just a little bit of catching the edge of that cloud. There we go, coming out of it. There we go. That wasn't too bad. No bumps or anything. We had a relatively turbulence free flight, which is good. All right, let's, uh, let's set up for the approach. We're gonna bring up the map and we're gonna zoom in on YUL at a low en route and we are going to be shooting to four left. That's not our airport. This one is CYUL, two four left, tune in nav one, tune in nav two. And it's one ten five for the ILS frequency, which is good. We're all set. So theoretically, there's our airport, that's our go around. Uh, we'll zoom in a little more. Yeah, so we uh, we got a ways to go before we start thinking about whether we're going to be able to line up good for the uh, for the ILS or not. But uh, we should be all right. Take a look outside again. A bit of a town there. You can see things are a lot clearer now uh, that we're only at 11,000 feet. <laughs> and unfortunately, we have to slow down because we're going to be coming up on 10,000 feet. And uh, below 10,000 feet, we're only allowed doing 250 knots. So 11,000 feet. So throttle back and we'll start slowing down I don't know why I bother setting the speed bug it doesn't do anything we'll throttle back to 245 setting the engines at idle should slow us down we're gonna over speed the we're gonna not gonna overspeed, but we're gonna we're gonna be over 250 for a little bit here. But I'm not too worried because um, we're we're getting there. I'm not gonna use any spoilers or anything. There's no ATC right now, so it's all good. So there, here comes Sloka, and if you remember, that's our first restriction of 3,000 feet. So. We will be hitting that no problem. It's it's still 40 miles out, and we're dropping at 1,800 feet per minute, and uh, we're already coming up on 8,000 8, feet. So I'm going to actually slow our descent and help us slow down a little bit. I'm going to 1,000 feet per minute. That should help us uh, help us get down to 250 as well. nine minutes till Montreal well, 
looks like we have some default X-plane textures down here by the looks of it. And it looks like we'll be hitting in some ortho right there. Orthographic imagery for our land is amazing. Just gives it a lot more realism. We'll look it out there and then look it out here. <laughs> You'll see the difference when we get there. See all the random squares that are farmers fields. That I could be wrong. It could actually very well be like that, but uh, I don't think so. I think up here is going to be much better. You can see CYUL sneaking sneaking out there. We're getting pretty close. And it looks like we'll be uh, coming straight in on two four left right from right from Sloka, so that's good. We'll be dialing in the uh, ILS. We already dialed in the ILS frequency, but we'll be dialing in the uh, the mode. This guy right here, nav source. And uh, as soon as we think we're close enough to actually catch that, which uh, will actually be um, right about here. Not sure where Sloka is. Huh. It's all good. We're just taking. We're on uh, V three five two right now. We're coming in, and then we'll be peeling off and heading back down towards Montreal right there. All right, we did slow down a little too much. My bad. I wasn't paying attention. It's not going to help our, uh, our our time getting in there. <laughs> now we're up to 10 minutes, whereas a couple of minutes ago it was nine. <laughs> so we're doing OK. I'll try and tow 250 exactly. Yeah, as soon as I sped up, we just jumped up to eight, an eight minute arrival time. So it's all good. Like I said, look at this ortho. It looks way more realistic than that. Look, night and day difference, right? So I obviously need to do this tile as well. Uh, yeah, there's some roads, those are, some, those are some buildings. These are actual orthographic photographs of the ground. There's some, there's a highway or, and some, you can see how the land is divided and they got some wood area, woodland area. There's some houses that are carved out of the, some woods, roads, some farmer's fields over here. Yeah, just way more realistic. All right, going a little too fast now. Yeah, see, I'm too, too busy gawking and talking. Should be paying attention to the throttle a little more. And because uh, we really don't need to be going that fast. Sloka is 20 miles out. We are turning towards it now. And uh, that's where our 3,000 foot limit is. So let's take a look at uh, the map. We should be turning off of that uh, airway now, three, V352. And we are. And then in Sloka, we're going to, which probably should be around here, we're going to be doing a pretty hard left. To, uh, to come into the ILS on this guy, which this guy, which is right here. So we'll be coming along here, around here, we'll be turning sharp and coming straight in for that approach. There's a river, some islands in the middle of it, a little road going along the side of it. It's awesome. All right, we're going to be leveling off here. Uh, I set it for 3,100 because we wanted to be above 3,000 at Sloka. 
So what we're going to need to do is, since we're leveling off, we don't have gravity on our side as much anymore. So we're going to have to, you can see that right there, we're already slowing down. So we're going to have to give it some more throttle to maintain our, uh, our 250. Uh, we want to maintain 250 until we get, a, get established or even get close to the approach there. And uh, that way we'll be in good shape to uh, get there in a reasonable amount of time, but also do not be so fast that we can't slow down and lose our energy. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right, no sign of the airport yet. Should be coming up shortly. Montreal City should be just right over here somewhere. As soon as we, like I said, as soon as we hit Slocher, we're going to do that left turn, and we'll be going right over uh, downtown, I believe. Downtown Montreal. We'll start looking for our. Uh, We'll start looking for our ILS shortly. Uh, they don't model the right side. I was going to switch the right side and take a look at, see if we can see our ILS coming in yet, but not quite yet. Although I do see a magenta triangle there. Whoa. Yeah. Now we got some got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, more civilization here a bunch of houses down there there's a highway I'd say downtown's right over there all right coming up on Sloka and we're gonna do our left turn Let's see how this goes. like we're lining up to our ILS as well. Let's see if that's, uh, this is actually, should be the course that we have in our navigation. Um, but let's just see, there's the airport in front of us. Let's begin slowing down and let's select nav one. And we'll line up for our runway, which is right in front of us. And if we zoom in, we can take a peek. There's the runway, there's the airport. And that's downtown over there, I think. All right, enough monkeying around. Let's start, start our approach stuff. Let's get some flaps down. We'll get our, oh, that was a little too fast on the flaps. There we go. All right, autopilot, stop freaking out. All right, we gotta, we gotta throttle down. Introduced a little too much flaps, a little too quickly, so we're gonna have to lose a little bit of altitude here. And we don't need our autopilot anymore. We'll take it from here. All right, trim it out. There, that looks about right. All right, gears down, flaps. We need a little more flaps. Being careful not to overspeed. Let's take the. Uh, let's take a look at that. We got about seven miles till we land. Drifting left a little bit, and we have a headwind of six knots. A little bit from the right, but pretty much straight on, so that's good. Watching that triangle, that magenta triangle, or diamond, we want to keep that right center if we can. And that's our glide slope. All right, 
rim it out a little bit so I don't have to play with the uh, yoke so much. There we go. Now we're going a little too low. So we're going to give her a little more throttle. And one more settings of flaps. We're five miles till landing right now. All right, I gotta pay attention. Floating left a little bit again. A little more throttle. Those flaps really add a lot of drag when you go full flap. Thousand feet till we land. Oh, a little bit of a gust there. A little bit of gust. A little bit, a bit of the gusties. All right, hope we don't float. Hope we don't float. Now we're a little high. Throttle down. A little bit right. Approaching. Two, four, left. We're a little bit right. Got to bring her back over a bit. Headwind will... Oh, the headwind's coming from the left now. Oh, that's what's going on. Okay, we're going to have to bring her over a little harder. There we go. 400 feet. Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. There we go. Sorry. Forgot to turn those on. Oh, and I just through off our approach. We're not going to be center. Good landing. All right. Reversers. They're on full. Seventy knots, manual braking. And we're good. Wasn't too bad. Nice and smooth. 189 feet per minute's respectable. Bringing up the flaps. Cleaning up the spoilers. Turning on our taxi lights. No, we didn't have our landing lights on. <laughs> And slowing down a little bit. Got to keep her under 20 on the ground speed. If we can. All right, let's uh, take a peek outside. I'm not even sure where we're parking. I'm guessing over in front of us there. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we're going. All right. All right, welcome to Montreal, capital of Quebec, the province in Canada, home of the CFL Alouettes and former home of the Montreal Expos baseball team. Two, eight. And of course the Montreal's famous smoked meat sandwiches. And we'll pick a good good parking spot and then we'll do uh, a replay of that landing and we'll take a peek and see how good it was. It wasn't 
I didn't like when I had to flip those switches and it threw me off a little bit. It would have been a re really nice landing, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Nice and smooth anyway. I think we'll park right over here next to this other, looks like a Continental over there that's uh, same class of aircraft. Some kind of CRJ by the looks of it. Could be an old ERJ. Ooh, nice big 747 in front of us and a 777 from Emirates. Nice. All right, looks like we're going to park right there. There we go. And we have no marshallers at this airport, so we're gonna have to go external. And stop when we're supposed to. There we go. Parking brake is on. There we go. There we go, folks. Uh, let's, uh, let's check out the replay, see how we did. We'll go to the outside view and we'll bounce back. Probably that's a little too far, I'm guessing. Let's take a peek here. Yeah, a little bit further, a little closer. All right, we'll just speed this along a little bit. Let's do tower view. And we'll just zoom in a little bit. All right, that's not working. <laughs> Tower view didn't work, guys. We're gonna have to do the standard. Uh, watch it from outside. Back up a little bit. And we'll get rid of these. We don't need these. There's the correction <laughs> from hitting those buttons. Floating around a little bit. Not too bad. In ground effect. Nice and smooth. There comes the spoilers. There's the front wheel. There's the reversers. Looks good. All right, let's uh, see this again. Let's see if we can get that tower view working, or even runway view. There we go. Watch them coming in, coming in, coming in. Floating around a little bit, not too bad. Boom. Not too shabby. Slowing down. Versers are, uh, are done. A little fast off the runway, but that's all right. It's a high-speed uh, taxiway. Speed, speed brakes are down, flaps coming up. Perfect. No complaints, guys, no complaints. All right, 
I'm going to turn the desktop down and I'm going to turn the music up and I'm going to run that replay uh, one more time and, uh, and then I'll be uh, calling it a day. So have a great one guys and uh, we'll talk to you soon.